Sure. I've got the audio on over there. Uh, not yet. I'm waiting to see if I can hear me. I can hear. I can hear Chuck. Yeah. Vamp for me, Chuck. While I. Uh... One, two, three. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. We're going to be playing some uh, Shadow Run using Tech Noir. Oh, did I just hear you come through? Yeah, you did hear it. You did hey, hear you can hear me now? It's working. Yeah. Hey. Does it sound all right? Does it sound tinny? I just installed the new OBS that's required for Twitch to continue to play right. So who knows how this is going to work out? Yeah, sounds good. Sounds all right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, if anybody out there listening tonight uh, would let us know if we are coming through too low, too high, uh, it would be much appreciated. But yes, playing Shadowrun, the new story arc tonight, and we are using the Tech Noir um, system for this with a nice little supplement you can get online called, uh, what is it called? Dragons Cast a Long Shadow? Yeah, yeah. Dragons Cast a Long Shadow version 1.0. Uh, very nice little supplement to the Tech Noir system. Uh, Lester Ward, if you want to look it up online, pretty nice document. Okay, so uh, we tonight is mostly going to be making our characters, trans, uh, translating them into the Tech Noir system, but also kind of setting up the storyline. And I'm going to start with that first because this is uh, this might influence how you build and how you spend your extra points. Um, so. After our last mission, uh, where you had two super corps uh, potentially, you know, not being too happy with you, and you were already on the run from As Technology, uh, you you did a solid. Uh, you you got a good payday, and more importantly, you were dropped off to some place you've never been before, uh, well within Ares territory. You are now in Detroit. Uh, it is now 2055. And you guys have been here for yeah, the last seven, eight months. You've really settled in. So I'm going to ask each of you a question. Uh, we'll start with Jeff. Uh, first of all, who's your character, Jeff? Uh, I'm playing uh, good old Gant to Praboa, street samurai dwarf. And, you know, he's, uh, he's a bit of a face, actually. He's been putting basically all the points he's had since character creation into being the, the front of the, the house thing. Yeah. <laughs> And it's actually worked fairly well. So let me ask, uh, Gontu, um, how's life been for Gontu? You're flush with cash. You're in a new yeah. place where no one knows your name. No one's been gunning for you. Um, Ares Technology has uh, not only given you a good start here, put enough creds in your bank to get off the ground, uh, but then has had a very hands-off, leave-you-alone policy. So how have you been prospering, Gontu? Uh, yeah, so, uh, Gantu, uh, started up a little cleaning business called Steve Arenos, uh, Super Cleaners. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a franchise inspired by some of his former, uh, his former, uh, gigs. So definitely he's got the, he's definitely a, uh, a, uh, what's it called? Small business guy. He likes to get a couple fires going. Uh, and uh, I like to think he's also made sure he's found a, a local uh, bowling alley with which he can uh, lay down some roots, get in the league system. So those are two of like the big, most important things for him. Uh, and uh, even though you said that Detroit's a nicer place, it's not as like crummy as some of I would imagine then most of the cleaning uh, is likely uh, less about cleaning up crime scenes and things like that, and maybe more about you know, just kind of higher end cleaning, maybe getting into the hotel game a bit, you know, maybe kind of venturing out, something like that. White That's glove service. Been up to. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right. Well, Steve I think Gontu's maybe uh, maybe shooting a little little low. Like uh, Gontu's got enough money, enough creds in the bank that he could own that bowling alley as a second uh a second venture is possible just to throw um, some ideas there. If that's the case, then Gantu damn well owns that bowling alley. That's okay. for sure. And he's made sure to, 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 to that. The, he's got one lane. That's only his, no one else can bowl in it. It's ever. a private lane. Like, that's his it's a private lane. The 
it's 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 basically fixed in my own pins so like I, i've rolled like so many 300 games in the mm. past couple of months it's pretty it's pretty impressive actually so has has gantu gone legitimate do you have a real sin now are you still holding uh-huh. on to your, your let's former not go days. crazy there <laughs> <laughs> that, i think gantu knows better than put all his eggs in that basket right. uh-uh. so no both sir-y. companies are owned by shell companies that are <laughs> oh, absolutely yeah, yeah. Indeed. All right. Does Gantu uh, live above the bowling alley? Uh, I like to think that maybe Gantu in in like a nearby fancy hotel oh, that he's, he's nice his hotel. service okay. is working. He's got he's part of the gig is that he has a really nice like high suite, you know, somewhere oh. well pretty far up, you know, not not the penthouse. That's that's too much. But pretty high up there, okay. you know. Maybe it's compensation yeah. for you to clean the chain of the hotel that you're staying he's, in. Part exactly. Of the conversation. Yeah. Okay, so you got a lot of employees. Uh, do mm-hmm. you yourself go out on these jobs anymore, or is that all just uh, you're just in the... a supervisorial capacity okay. Okay. mainly? You know, and I do a lot of sales, of course. I'm, I'm, you know, wheeling and dealing, finding new clients, things like that, following up on the leads, that sort of thing. But I don't really get my hands dirty with the cleaning anymore. I mean, okay. That. Yeah. Doing well then. Doing well, Jake. Yeah. Um, Kaylee is in this place that actually uh they have a lot of programs from here for people that have come down with ghoulism that have uh, acquired uh, that genetic disorder and uh, they do have uh they've developed not a cure uh, but something that sates your appetite without you having to eat uh flesh and uh, there's a lot of support for this out here uh you're flush with cash so you can you know recreate your uh, your your network uh, piracy web, if you will. So what has Kaylee been doing with her finances and her time in the last, you know, seven, seven months, seven, eight months? Uh, well, definitely seeking some sort of uh, stability in terms of trying to uh, sate that appetite. Can't be running around doing stuff anymore like that. So she's decided to sort of just keep her head down in that regard and and try to really focus more on her aspiring digital life. Uh, She's recreated a new virtual uh, avatar for herself Mm -hmm. uh, called K Lava. And she's now the lead singer of the (laughs) Tectonics spelled capital T three capital K dash capital T zero capital N lowercase I capital X lowercase X capital X tectonics. Nice. <laughs> so you, uh, you got a taste for the limelight. Uh, when you, oh, absolutely. Yeah, all right. When you played in the Caribbeans. All right. Fair enough. Uh, and so how have you invested or, uh, used your money? Uh, so uh, just to build the sweet nest or have you, you know, got property that you own? Have you invested in companies? Um, yeah. Um, if Gantu would allow it, uh, Kaylee would absolutely love to just sort of set up shop uh, beside the boiler room of <laughs> Steve Arenos. Uh, just, you know, have some nice little coolant systems going on, a little cabinet with some medication in it. And uh, oh, sure. we're old friends. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, the, the sounds of musical generation are enhanced and drowned out by the boiler room. <laughs> both at the same time but it Absolutely. sounds like uh, kaylee is uh keeping keeping back some rainy day funds you're not going overboard with your expenditures no huh? okay the initial investment was in the creation of the avatar <clears throat> right all right ivan uh not only were you flush enough with cash to uh we'll get to what you've been doing but you were also able to pay off some old debts so you no longer have those nice. rushing gangs after you nice uh, your criminal record that you had acquired since has mysteriously been expunged uh, because I do believe you had a real sin, at least at yeah. one point. Yeah. Yeah. So what have you been doing with your remaining money, which is quite substantial in a very safe, uh, you know, area. Detroit is again, very well protected as it's the home base for Aries macro technology. Um, there's very, there, th- to say that there is a slum here would just simply be the suburbs, which are still very nice. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, oh, there's also, there's also the, the, mm, the magical Institute of technology is here. 
they have a very large campus teaching uh, magical theory um, as well. So, yeah. Um, well, first off, Ivan wouldn't feel comfortable without having Gantu in some way <laughs> being there to, uh, you know, some kind of supervisory position. So I think my first thing I would be is I would probably be like the manager, maybe security, uh, loss preventions for his bowling alley. I will live in the apartment above the bowling alley. <laughs> okay. You live in a rock and bowl? Okay. Yeah. Rock and bowl's got, we got an apartment above it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I live up there. Uh, but with mainly with my my funds, I did start up a a doggy daycare. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, just very specifically, that way I can give the best scout plenty of friends to play with. So it's just entirely selfish. Like I I don't care about your dogs. I just the best scout needs friends, and so that's. Yeah, that's very much what I've been doing. So yeah, I, I oversee the bowling alley. When Gantu comes to bowl, I just hang out and drink and cheer him on. And Okay. And uh, uh, go ahead. Sorry. I was, you know, that's, that's yeah, it, pretty much other than that, I'd probably just be setting in the money. Because even if I have money, I feel more comfortable in a, you know, feeling destitute. So... <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. So you haven't had the need to run the shadows for any extra money for a, a while now. Uh, how's that playing with everyone? Is everybody pretty satisfied with not having, you know, being shot at every night and wondering which corp is uh, signed over your death warrant? I gotta say it's nice. <laughs> I live in a dark corner. It's awesome. I, I, do, uh... I miss the excitement. <laughs> yeah. so Ivan misses the I do miss well. smashing things. So yeah. I like to think maybe uh like I take like I, like deliveries and such. I smash a lot of our equipment from time to time just for fun. Just to keep yeah. in practice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just every now and then. You know, yeah. Like the pallets, I just break down my own. That's the only time I get my hands dirty. It's when I break in <laughs> there. There you go. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that works. Uh, so that's how you guys have spent the last, you know, seven-ish months or so. As I said, we're well into 2055 in the timeline. Uh, things have been pretty good uh, as far as safety, security, money. Maybe not so good as far as excitement goes. Again, very well-protected city. So uh, we're going to make our characters now. And uh, the way I'm going to do this is we're going to make... Um, and you can do this, you don't have to do it in uh, stages, okay? So I'm going to basically give you, we've played five other systems, so I'm going to give you five advancements is how we're going to do this. And you can kind of mix and mingle. You don't have to do one stage before the next because some of you have to recreate some gear that may require more than any one stage is going to give you, okay? So here's how this is going to work. Um, so working off the Dragon's Cast Along Shadow one here. Some of you are going to need multiple character sheets because there are, in Tech Noir, there's basically two stages of existence. You've got meat space and you've got uh, the net space. And they really don't make too much of a delineation there. And so you can use your stats, or in the case of Tech Noir, they're called verbs. When you do something, you use a verb. You verb something. <laughs> um, but since there are so many different layers of reality in Shadowrun, it, it will make one set of verbs overly powerful if you can just cross all the different uh, realms, as it were. So if you are, for instance, a magic user, uh, you're going to have to make not only a meat space persona, you also make a persona for your magical ability. And magical ability also comes with astral perception. So that's a third thing you interface with, okay? Um, our tech people would have meat space just just character that's all really he does you only really interact with meat space uh kaylee however is three things she's a ghoul for one uh so that's doesn't require its own form that's still meat space but ghouls can astrally perceive so we're going to need at least one sheet for that as well and then she's a tech person 
that does go into the net and has a persona in the net. So that's a third sheet. Um, so let's let's start with meat space because everybody shares meat space in common. So the way this is going to work um, in Technoir, you basically buy uh, classes, and your class comes with your verbs, and they come with you know you choose an adjective. So in the ver form that we're playing right now, the way this is going to work is you have training slots. Um, start with seven slots, uh, but you guys get five more. So just keep that in mind. You get the seven plus another five slots. Okay, each slot applies to one form. So one slot would be you can use your your meat space form. Another slot could be used for your astral space form, etc. Now let's have everybody start with meat space. Uh, your native form uh, comes with uh, basically your what's your meta type. Um, so that's called a variation. So if you're a dwarf, your variation of meat space is dwarf or elf or ghoul. Okay, um, that's just an adjective that will come into play that could be positive or negative depending on the situation. So on the character sheets, um, I think I would put it, let me open up one here so I can follow along with you. If I can get it to open. Why won't you open? I will just open up Kaylee's. <laughs> one of Kaylee's. Okay, so on the first uh, page, they've got the three blocks at the top. The first one is your name. Uh, you can put in the second one. Um, you can put in there what your variation is, whether you're an elf, a ghoul, etc. Just put that in there. So everybody's verbs, the base verbs are coax, detect, fight, hack, move, operate, prowl, shoot, and treat. They all start at one for your meat space. Everybody gets one in all of those verbs. Okay, now is that defaulted on the sheet or is it's it defaulted? It's it? defaulted okay, on the sheet. That's what I thought. Okay, yeah. now um, you may then expend a slot, uh, a further slot. So your first slot is to get your meat space form with ones and all of your verbs. Now you may expend a slot to buy a second form. So like if you need your astral form, you you spend a slot to get that. Um, so those of you that need extra forms, just mark off that many slots that you need to do that and we'll get to building those in just a minute um, you may spend a slot to get an additional forum which is we just talked about additional training additional connections augmentation money or magics okay so with a slot you can raise any of your verbs on whichever form that you're going to raise um, three points worth so pick three things and raise them by a point each. Uh, pick one thing. You can't go more on, on this initial. Actually, no, I'm going to take this back because we're building it all, all at once. Spin them how you want. So each slot allows you to get three bumps to the verb in whatever form you're putting it in. It also allows you to get one adjective. So uh, if you look at the verb list, they give you some ideas of what adjectives you might choose for that verb. You guys follow? Please, please tell me if you're not, because it does get a little confusing with the whole <laughs> word play that they so use here. We have seven slots, plus we're going to have five advancements, but we'll set that aside for yeah. now. Each slot gives us three ticks in a in one of our verb skills, basically. Yeah. And then it also we get an adjective an with adjective. that verb skill right. that we take. Okay. Or a slot can give you a, a new form in one of the other realms. Yeah. Uh, or allows you to get a new connection, a new person uh, to be connected with, a new augmentation, money, um, or intrinsic magics. Okay. So, like, as a caster, I had natively seven slots. I got to burn two of those for my extra forms. Yes. So, I've got five slots. And this is just for meat space, or do I have to spare these? No, these, these go everywhere. Slots? So what? So yeah, you spend a slot on whichever form you wish to use it in. Okay, so okay. like if you want to spend a, a slot, but you want to put the the gains in that slot to astral form, for instance. But let's uh, let's not do those just yet. You might want to save some slots for those because those are the points are a little different because you don't start with ones in all of the different forms. 
Okay. Okay, so let's just do meat space first since everybody shares meat space. All right. So, like for slots, I would probably take one for sure. Is there anywhere to record this on the sheet? Oh, you just, uh, what do you want to record? So I was thinking like uh, for the first slot for meat, shoot, uh, meat space, I'm good at prowling, I'm good at shooting. So sneaking and shooting. So I was going to spend yeah. a slot, dump two into prowl and right. one into shoot. So just go ahead and increase those verbs by, like if you click on the empty boxes, yeah. it will fill them in. That's all you have to do. And then, okay. and then with each slot, you can purchase one adjective. And so like okay. look at the list for each of those verbs and pick an adjective you, you like and write it on the positive side. So there's two columns, pos positive adjectives and negative adjectives. Okay. Yeah. Technically, when you're buying a slot, you are spending some time learning a profession, right? And so like you can look at the professions that they give and they give examples of these might be the three verbs or two verbs you want to increase um, with your three points. Here are some possible adjectives you can take. So you can take that and say, hey, uh, I spent some time doing this job and that's what I got. Or you can just buy it outright. You don't have to state, state it was from a particular job. Okay. Okay. So, and so I spend that slot, I get to buy an adjective and it doesn't have to come from the list. That's just a suggestion list. It's just right? a suggestion. Yeah. But uh, it was, since we're just working with meat space right now, uh, keep it to meat space. Like you do, you don't want to right. buy any magic stuff in your meat space right. form. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, just gonna go on the character sneaky. sheet, should we put adge the adjectives that we're picking? I mean, they don't. We can put them in any order, yes. right? They're not any, like any intending to line up. When okay. you roll the dice, you just say, hey, I've got this adjective that might fit, and you don't even have to specifically gotcha. use the verb that it might have been tied to. You don't have to at all. Perfect. <clears throat> gotcha. I spent one slot, put a couple points in prowl, one in shoot, and I took the adjective sneaky. Yeah, that works. Um, and then coax... Typically, I would spend at least uh, three slots on your meat space because, I mean, you spent a lot of your life just working in the meat space. So spending right. three slots in meat space make a lot of sense. You don't have to, but it, it, that is the, the typical. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend two in meat space and then two in magic and one in astral. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's... Um... A discrepancy between the uh, Dragon's Castle Long Shadow and the character sheet we're using, and that the uh, character sheet has hack but not alter, and the uh, thing we're working off of has alter but no hack. But <laughs> the thing we're working off of has alter and operate, yeah. and part of operate says use physical objects for their intended purpose. So I'm thinking maybe that would be sort of like a redundant thing, like maybe we could use. Well, well, okay, so out, operate just means your ability to use a, like, knowing how to use a cell phone. Not hack a cell phone, just knowing right. the ins and outs of how you would use a cell phone. That's what operate does. Okay. Uh, you could drive a car. You know how to operate a car, but you wouldn't necessarily know how to fix a car. Right? right. So yeah. Okay, so could we use a hack as, like, a thing for alter as well in that respect? or Alter, yes. You could use hack instead of alter. Right. Okay. But not in replace of operate. Gotcha. And Chuck, tell me when you're ready to do uh, the magical forms. Okay. Okay. I'm good. I'm ready to do magic. Good. Okay. So this would be your supernal form. Uh, which mm -hmm. is just so the first thing you pick is your variation, and that's typically what kind of uh, spellcaster you are. 
so in your case, uh, you could put uh, here. I'll, I started a Google Doc on this. Give me a second. Forms Perl, that's 25. It's on page 25 is when it starts. 25. Okay, so that could be like a shaman, a mage, a physical adept. Um, yeah, so I mean, you could just put down mage if you wanted to. Yeah, that, that fits. <clears throat> All right, so that's your variation, which is basically a free adjective. Okay. Now, as far as the uh, supernal, let's see, your stats. Uh, it's the same verbs, uh, but you don't start with ones. Uh, let me check this real quick. I have to buy ones. Yes, you do. You start with okay. zeros. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to go with like the things that I do most. So if I drop two verbs... Uh, let's see, it would be like uh, my two things are like evocation and illusion are the ones that I use the most. Mm -hmm. So that would probably be alter, uh, possibly fight. Um, and what else did you say? Evocation and what? Uh, evocation on illusion. An illusion. Term, okay. Like and then invisibility. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, coax, uh, possibly. Coax. Yeah. So if you look up page 27, they tell you what each of the verbs will be used for as a mage. Okay. Like reshape or transform something or someone with magic is alter coax a charm or enchant people with magic negotiate with and summon spirits. <clears throat> okay. All right, so I'll take flight and prowl, I think, because prowl sneak around and it's got the yeah. invisible. Yeah. All right, so I'm just going to dump three into each of flight. So remember, each slot gives you three points and then one adjective. And yeah. if you look on page 27, they'd give you some possible ab adjectives to yeah. use there. Let's see. Yeah. So I'm going to take invisible. And fight. Oh, I need a good adjective for throwing fire at things. <laughs> Jeff, you know words. What do I throw out there? Good adjective for lighting shit on fire. Arsonist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Incendiary. Yeah. I love it. All right, uh, Jake, uh, your virtual form. All right, yeah. All right, so it cost uh, a slot just to get the form, and then let's see. Yeah, so yours is the same thing for the virtual form as your your verb start at zero. You've got to buy them from there. Uh, you do get some free stuff, though, uh, a basic um, a, a cyber deck, sim stack, and all that. But we'll replace that with your actual gear from prior game systems. But, yeah, so your verb well, start I at think zero. Well, I think this works fine because last time Kaylee was working with, like, a highly oh, modified wait, sure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh Initial verb ratings for virtual is one, set all to one. Okay. I missed that. Well, I mean, it, uh, the character sheet can't go to zero, unfortunately. Yeah. And Chuck, uh, yours did start at zero, but then you get to add three points for free uh, to any of the verbs you wanted before you spend another slot. So, like, you have to spend the one slot to get the form, which come with three points. Okay. And then for your variation, uh, Jake, you choose like, you know, are you a hacker, a decker, a console cowboy, just some kind of designator as to, uh, you know, what your virtual presence is like. Mm. 
And again, um, it's essentially it's a free adjective. Uh, so you know, pick well. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh. Techno rocker. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I like it. <clears throat> okay, and then uh, you get ones in all of your verbs for free for your one slot to take the form and then spend however many other slots you want to on it. Uh, you have one other form you have to buy, but you really you don't have to spend any more than just the one slot. You don't have to throw anything more into your astral since really all you can do is perceive. You can't move. You can't interact. Well, actually, you can interact, uh, but you can't move or do anything else. I'm limited to my own meat as far as movement goes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'll tell. Actually, that's easy so i'll tell you what that is if you've got a second to do that on your astral space sure. form so what you'll get is you you have constant which means you can sense but you can't turn it off uh so you have astral awareness but you don't have astral projection but it also means that astral things can affect you because you can't turn it off it's being a ghoul it's just part of your nature but it gives you the verb detect at four your move can never be more than zero and mm -hmm. then pick two other verbs that you can put at two and one at one. And you get that for your one slot. And for Chuck, you also have astral space, so you have to spend a slot on this, but you don't have to spend yeah. any more. But for the one slot, you get detect at two. Uh, no, sorry. Detect at three, move at one, and everything else at zero. Okay. All right. Uh, and that's on page am... 28 if you want to see what the other verbs could do for you in astral. Okay. I just tried doing something here. Let me try to... I'm going to take it all nope. into... Okay. Coax. I'm going to put... All right, what were the numbers that I could work with again? I, it's difficult because I can't select none for any of these verbs oh yeah that's true um yeah that's interesting yeah i'm gonna have to fix that on the sheet uh once we start so your numbers for constant or detect four move is always zero two others at two and one at one i'll write those in the uh i'll write those in the programs here yeah that works Oh. All right, and going to Jeff. Uh, did you have any questions on your spending? Remember, you're going to have to buy cyber for your arm and leg. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So and that's like, is that going to be like one slot per? Um, well, it's it's body cost. Uh, one slot gives you 15 build points. Okay. Um, yeah, 15 build points. So then if you look down at objects, uh, implants, it tells you okay. what the costs are. You only have to pay the base cost and not the implant cost. So where it says base cost is you're just paying the base cost. Where, where is that? I'm looking in the implants is 49 line. page 49 under body replacements. So a cyber arm, gotcha. uh, yeah. base cost is one. Uh, the tag is nerve linked because you need that. And then you can choose yeah. one upgrade and then the rest of the upgrades. Uh, oh, okay. One K I was thinking like 1000, one crit. Okay. One I got it. Crit. No, I'm, yeah. I'm stupid. Yeah. I got you. And so, so I could do, so you said one slot equals 15 build points. Yes. And then, so that would, the base cost would be one, but then however many of those upgrades is how much one is more an upgrade cost? One more. One more point. One more. Perfect. You okay. get one upgrade yeah, for free, and then after that, it's one more each. Okay, so I get the tag, and then plus one upgrade just for buying, yeah. and then I have to spend on top. Yep. Gotcha. All 
and it's similar to what you would do for spells. Um, actually, hold on a second. I think they do spells a little different. Uh, is that under just supernal? <coughs> And this is the first time any of us have played this, so <laughs> bear with us out there. This is uh, a shopping episode. Call it that. Yeah. Ah, it's under patterns, Chuck, for your spells. So how do I get those? It's basically the same thing as gear. You spend a slot, you get 15 points. And for instance, on page 52 under spells, um, the base cost is one. Uh, to get the, the base tag, let's call it Fireball, the tag's magical, and you get one upgrade for free, but then every other upgrade costs one more. So I got to spend more slots to get my spells. Yep, so one slot, well, one slot will give you 15 points worth, which is enough to buy multiple spells. Okay. So the base cost of a spell is just one. And you get 15 to start with. With that one, you get one upgrade for free, one tag for free. So, like, for instance, a fireball, uh, you could say your first upgrade is, um, and this is just a, a list of adjectives as examples, but you could uh, you say, you know, it's, um, mm, let's see, what's a good one? Uh, and they don't have a really good adjective for like a fireball. But you could do like, uh, for instance, like area of effect as one upgrade for a point. Okay. Uh, so call it large or uh, call it area, whichever. Um, okay. If you wanted to be able to do it at a longer distance, you might want to pick up... Um, reach for it for instance would be a good one to pick up for distance i gotta figure out tags to, or slots to drop that i would just put it as part of the name like uh say spell fireball uh tag magical because it really doesn't do anything system wise other than just to let us know that the power is magically based Uh, but there is on the character sheets there is a uh, a tab for objects um, so on the left hand side maybe put in what the spell is and the right hand side in the larger box just put in the details put in what the upgrades are yeah so if i've got two spells that'll take up two of my seven slots uh yeah I, I don't have a good way to put more slots on here uh no 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 uh a slot gives you 15 points to buy your spells with oh okay so right. i've already invested two slots into this which would be 30 points of spells if you that's okay. quite a bit you may not need to okay, do that cool. because the okay so like if you're noticing the the descriptors, the upgrades, don't make your spell any more powerful. It just gives it more effects. So the okay. way that you would make it more powerful is spend to increase the verb that you would use for that kind of spell. Okay. So you're not actually going to spend all that many points on your spells. Okay. So well, like, um, like, so if you click on the the subject tab for that sheet, like I've got, I've already got yeah. the verbs invisible and incendiary. I use two slots on that. 
So that would give me 30 points, uh, 15, which is a lot for invisible, 15 for incendiary. Am I getting no, that right? No, no, no. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can. All right. So you spent one slot just to get the form. With that form, you get, uh, you got those three free points for your verbs. Yep. And you got yep. one free adjective. Uh, so what did you, you, so you choose invisible as your adjective, let's say? Uh, I guess not. I could do invisible for that adjective. Because, yeah, I threw mage in as the Mage first is free. Adjective. That's the free one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's called your variation. So mage is free. So you can put that in there okay. as free. Um, and then you've got two more adjectives, invisible and incendiary. Uh, one of them you get free for buying the okay, form. Okay, so we'll do invisible for free. Actually, no. Ah, I'm sorry. Again, sorry. This is the first time we're doing it's this. It's all right. You spend one slot to get the form. Uh, they gave you three points to put in three your points. verbs. And the one free adjective, which is mage. Okay. The next okay. slot, slot you spend is a training slot where you can add three more points to your verbs and get one adjective. So you would right. have to you would have to spend another slot to get more adjectives. Right. So one slot gave me mage for my first. Yeah. And then I spent a slot for invisible and a slot for incendiary. Okay. Point my spells at those. Which also gave you six more points to put into your verbs. Right, and okay. I had Got distributed those. those amongst my verbs. Okay, yeah. And then for your spells, you spend one slot to get 15 points worth of spells. Okay, so I'll have to do a third slot here. Mm -hmm. But okay. you can get a lot of spell for 15 points. Yeah. Because again, remember, the number of points you put into the spell does not make the spell more powerful. It's the verb right. that makes the spell more powerful. Okay, and then I just spend those points on the verbs, right? Well, you've already spent points on your verbs. Well, the verbs for the spell. So no, I can no, no, no. fire. Okay. Well, what, okay, so you've already spent your your slots on the verbs, okay? To right. get to get think of the spells as permissions. Like I have permission to cast fireball because I bought fireball for a point. Okay. Okay. So to use fireball, you would use the verb probably fight. Right. Okay. okay. So so do you get that? Yeah. So I've got four points in fight. Mm -hmm. Right. Which would tie to fireball. Yeah. So you would, uh, well, they could tie to anything, any of your spells, but fireball would probably use fight. So when you're rolling, you would roll those four dice. And then I would ask, what spell are you casting? You would say fireball. Okay. Well, that that's, that's a, a push die is called. It's an extra die that you would roll. Okay. And then if... If any of the upgrades for fireball, let's say you wanted to hit four people with your fireball, I would say, do you have an upgrade that would allow you to do that? Yes. Here's my upgrade. Okay. So that's another die you would roll. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure. Let me, yeah. <laughs> While you're thinking, I can ask a question. Mm -hmm. if you want to take a moment. So I'm working on my, my augmentations and body replacements. Mm -hmm. so there, there's there been three that, that Gantu sort of focused on since the beginning. So dermal plating, which is just an augmentation and just a flat two. Yes. Um, and there's no upgrades to that. It's just, it's just flat tags. Yep. And I got my cyber arm and I have a couple questions uh, on because I'm not sure, quite sure what they mean. This might be something like with some of the tags, uh, some of the potential up upgrades means. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm assuming the, the upgrade firewall, does that just make them harder to hack? Like yes. if somebody was trying to hack. Yeah. Okay. What about hard linked versus linked? And uh, cause like they, cause they start as nerve linked, but yes. then there's also hard linked and linked upgrades. Like what are those actually? So nerve linked uh, is, is the thing that comes with it free. It just means it's wired into your nervous system. Um, okay. Hard linked would be like, uh, let's say your cyber arm, you wanted to have a cyber gun with it. Uh, so how are mm -hmm. those two things linked together? A hard link would be like a cable okay. going from the gun to your arm. Um, okay. All right. So, so really, really those upgrades. Hard links. I probably would want to put hard link in my cyber leg because that's the one that has, has had the, the shotgun. In yes. Because so, yeah. I've already got like compartment and then everything mm -hmm. in there too. But the upgrades really, again, they're not anything specific. They're just adjectives okay. describing kind of the effect you want. So you can say, okay. I'm choosing this word, and this is what the word means to me. Okay, fair enough. Okay. 
because they don't even break down what any of those upgrades mean. You're, it's left to you right. to decide what they mean. Got you. But they threw those examples in there. Like firewall is a good one because if you say, um, with you, let's say your cyber doesn't have a firewall. Like I said, well, I can hack into your cyber and take control of your leg and arm. Do you have anything to defend against that? No, you didn't get firewall or you didn't get some kind of adjective to defend against hacking. So I am dumping so many points in these things. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, all that's really all you have to dump into is augmentations. Is augmentations. Yeah. 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 I'm a, I'm a simple man, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you might want to save some back to have a whole bunch of connections seeing as you're the businessman. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I am also uh, gregarious and savvy. Uh, those are mm -hmm. some of my uh, some of my adjectives. Some of your adjectives, okay. Mm -hmm. And fistic. That's a very good one. <laughs> fistic. Because <laughs> he's all about <laughs> punching. Sure. Very, very focused with that one. All problems can be solved by this adjective. It's true. <laughs> it's true. I mean, fist bumping is is, is can I can I'll, you know like like I'm gonna fist bump them and break their hand when they touch my ridiculously high military grade yep. tough quick firewalled strong yeah you also might want to look at vehicles like if you wanted to have a really uh tricked out van now you don't have to i mean you might just have a motor pool and that could be just something you can put on the side and not really have a part of your character uh no i definitely will be looking into because i i have stuff to play with because yep. i mean I, I have, I mean, like I could conceivably just put all my stats up, but I'm not a hacker. So I'm leaving my hack and my treat at like base. Mm -hmm. That's not what I do. So yeah, I still have a lot more to play with still. I'm only halfway there. Yeah. There's like also uh, physical talents as well. Although most of these are for me to build into creatures. Um, so yeah, I guess I don't look at that too heavily. Uh, but yeah, gear, vehicles. Uh, page fifty-eight does have a list of tags uh, to give you an idea what some of those, what they meant by some of those. But again, it's more what you mean by them than anything else. But they do give you a list there. Uh, Chuck, how you coming along? You getting it? Still confused. I'm reading through it, trying to see if I can okay. sort it out. Because I guess I'm missing the the connection of. So, like for my mage, yeah. Like, how do I get the? Because this would count as my spells count as objects. They're objects, mm -hmm. right? How do I purchase those objects? You spend one I'm... slot and you get 15 points. Okay. Okay. Each spell only costs one point with one free. Um... Right. Okay. Yeah, but you can spend and more my... to get more use out of them, but it costs one okay. point per spell and you get 15 points. So you could have up to 15 spells or you could have okay. just a few spells that have really large versatility. Okay. So does my on my subject, my adjectives that I pitched picked up, invisible incendiary, do those do I need those? Does that make sense? Uh it depending on how you um again think of them uh, so they're adjectives, right? So maybe instead yeah. of invisible, you're just a sneaky person in general. Uh and that's okay. how you define what invisible means to you. And so okay. I would say you you could tell me I'm trying to you know hide in shadows and be sneaky. It's like, do you have an adjective that makes you sleepy sneaky? Yes, I have invisible. Okay. Okay. So I've got I've got sneaky on my meat space. Yep. So then on my magic space, sneaky on your magic space would basically mean your spells are you're not like oh look he's the caster because he's waving his hands and he's uh, grabbing spell components. So having right. an adjective of, on sneaky on your magical part may mean that you don't need any of that. Okay. Like, I just have to look at you and my spell goes off. I don't have to wave my hands and do all these other things. Uh, that That's one interpretation that you might take okay. it to mean. So I could just throw an adjective out there, just call it like spell slinger. 
or you know battle mage and oh, battle mage would be a good one so i would say you're under heavy fire from five different sources and you're trying to cast a spell do you have an adjective that would keep you cool under fire yes All i'm right. a, i'm a battle mage you know so i put one into battle mage and mm -hmm. i just leave it okay yeah you you so... get to decide what it means what that adjective right. means to you all right, and then so I'm going to spend a second slot uh, for spells. Well, and you get 15 points worth of spells. And I need to use one point to get each spell. So I 15, so that means I'm down to 13 buying fireball and invisibility. Okay, I think I've got my head around it. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, and again, literally, you could buy 15 spells. Or you could just buy a handful of spells and give them a lot of versatility by picking yeah. up extra traits. Okay. All right. I think I've, I've got it. I think I've got it. So I start with one and everything. Battle Mage is going to give me a point in detect and two in fight. Uh, Jake, how are you coming along? I think I'm doing all right because I have... Uh... I know that three of the points or three of the slots are mandatory training. So um, I put those into uh, my virtual form and then I spent another, my final slot to also put more training into the virtual form. Oh, it's yeah. really going to yeah. okay. beef it up. But um, I know that uh, when I purchase the training, I can get the positive aspect or the positive adjectives from those. But then uh, do, does putting, putting the points into the verbs also allow me to pick adjectives from those verbs? No. You get okay. one free adjective per slot you spend on training. Okay. You, you can't actually buy more adjectives is what I'm saying. One slot gives right. you one adjective. Gotcha. Yes. Three points right. to spend so on your verb, but only to, one can adjective. I, can I choose to pull that from the training or from uh, verbs? You or can, does it or it doesn't matter you can choose the adjective from anywhere you want you don't have to keep it from what you just spent on training okay not at all no not at all you can just make up an adjective of your own too all right um, it, it just means that when you purchase a slot worth of training you get a free adjective any adjective gotcha gotcha so you guys we're going to be riding around in some style uh, <laughs> i have it. i have severely upgraded our our cleaning van it's still a cleaning van and it does and obviously it's going to be lettered on the side to steve Arino's super cleaners mm -hmm. but it is a hauler which means it is armored uh can carry cargo it's heavy it's huge has treads uh but i i made sure to upgrade it to allow for passengers a gun with burst fire retractable cable because that's just practical and obviously a riot hose because it is a cleaning van so yeah. there you go <laughs> I was thinking about putting like a little special compartment just for Scout, but I ran out of uh, points. Oh, much like Cortex as well, when you're spending character points on gear like this, I can make it unavailable to you story-wise, but I cannot remove it from you permanently. So like gotcha. if your van might blow a tire or get flipped over and you can't use it for that mission, but I can't just take it from you. I'm really, really thinking about uh, about buying a jet ski. Because uh, <laughs> why the hell not? Yeah, you know, I mean, like, you've got some great you're... lakes there that you can go jet skiing on. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I can easily afford a Marlin, which is a flexible private boat. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. really... Also, remember uh, uh, what I what I just said. So, like, if you <gasps> wanted to buy as an uh, buy your hotel or buy your bowling alley with character points. I can't take it from you. I might, you know, you might have to spend several yeah, episodes yeah. fixing it, but I can't take it. <laughs> junk, junk. But air vehicles, hang glider. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> he gets his hang gliders. Right. Yeah. Okay. Done. Yeah. That's beautiful. When I pick an adjective for something, can it have dual meanings? It means what you want it to mean. It, okay, it's so... it's a convince me sort of thing. So if gotcha. I if I propose to you a scenario and you say I think this would fit because, and I say yeah, it's reasonable. All right. So yeah, I'm I'm an independent artist, so I'm driven to uh -huh. succeed. Okay. 
I'm also a hacker who could get into a vehicle, and then that vehicle can be driven. <laughs> like that yeah. sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, t typically with an adjective, you have in mind like what you want it to be. I mean, you could even tie them together, and it's like just whatever you're operating, you're driven to do it correctly. You yeah. Know? And you can just say that. So the limiting factor on all this, because you're probably asking, well, I can just stack 20 adjectives onto my role. No, you can't. Uh, <laughs> you you have a I'm limited... Using, I'm trying to use one adjective <coughs> for multiple types of role. Yeah. I mean, that's how you define it. If you can define it to be pretty loose, more power to you. Um, but so what the limiting factor is, is if you look at the top of your character sheet, you've got that, the red and blue circles, mm -hmm. it says, uh, it's your push charged and discharged. So a beginning character starts with three push die. <coughs> the push die are what you take with your adjectives. You only get three. So the most you can use extra, no matter how many useful adjectives you have is three. Now, you guys aren't first-level characters, though. I'm going to give you an extra push die for each of the other systems we've played, right? So you're going to have eight push die, because these are pretty high-level characters. So in any given die roll, eight is the maximum you would be able to ever choose ad adjectives for. You could have 20 adjectives that apply, but you would never be able to, more, to use more than eight at a time. Okay? Now, in this system... It's a dice pool system. It's all D6s. Uh, your pool will consist of both positive dice and negative dice. You, when you roll, though, you're not adding anything. The maximum thing you can roll is a six. So it's the highest die that you get is, is what the success number is. Now, your negative dice, um, if you have negative adjectives, for every negative adjective you have, you roll a different colored die. Let's say that die comes up with the number two. If in your positive dice, you have the number two, all of those twos are removed. Whatever no number shows on your negative die, all of those numbers are removed, leaving you with whatever's left. And the sheet actually does that pretty well. Um, if you, I'm going to use whose sheet is this, Kaylee sheet here. Let's say I'm going to roll detect. Um, I click that button. It's going to ask me how many push die. Let's say you're going to use all, uh, well, I've only got three set up now. So let's say you're going to use all three dice. If you look at the output, it tells you that the verb had three dice and you rolled a six, three, and four. Your push dice were a four, six, and two. So your end result is a six. Now you've got two sixes there. So technically that would be a 6.1. So, like, if your difficulty, the person you're rolling against also has a six, but you have two sixes, so you do beat them. Okay? Now, if you're hurt, and hurt dice are your, your negative adjectives. So, again, if I open up Kaylee here, um, and I do at the very bottom of the verb list, it says hurt dice. Let's say she's got five hurt dice on her, and we're going to try uh, rolling detect again. And let's say you're using all of your push die. And I roll that. Uh, mm. If you see at the bottom those hurt dice, it mm -hmm. removes every six. So you can't have a six result. It removes every two, every five, and every one. So your end what? result here is going to be a four. That's the bet, or a 4.1 because you got two fours. So that's going to be your best result. It's a 4.1. Bert, um, when you were saying I could purchase the <coughs> the bowling alley, yep. Uh, where where would you <laughs> direct me for costs for that? Uh, I would say, okay, hold on, let me look at this real quick. Well, how nice of a building is it? The bowling alley? Yeah. I mean, it's rock and bowl. I would say it has, uh, it is the premier bowling alley uh, for bowlers. Okay. I would say a base cost of 10 uh, with one free upgrade and then just a point for each upgrade you want to give it. So like you okay. have a building, 10 points, the free upgrade could be bowling alley. Okay. Okay. Now, if you also wanted to have apartments upstairs, that would cost another point. So 11 points, you'd have a bowling alley with apartments upstairs. All right. Gotcha. 
If you wanted to have an armored, secured bowling alley with apartments upstairs. <laughs> okay. I've got my spells. All right. Let me take a look at your guy. Yeah. <laughs> Ivan, the toilet ghost is your astral, I take it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so fireball with range, sneaky, and wide. So one, two, three. What's that number at the top? That's how much I spent on each one, including buying the spell. Okay, so one to buy fireball, and you get one of those uh, uh, oh, upgrades free. One of those free? Yeah. Okay, so that changes the cost of all those. Mm -hmm. So two. Don't get, push the right button, Chuck. Okay, so then I'll... Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like you did it just fine. Range discerning. <clears throat> so discerning on detect would be like you can look for specific things. Like I want to yep. know. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. I need another spell. Mm -hmm. Also, look yeah. at astral though. Look at your verbs on astral. Um, I don't know how much you put on astral, but your verbs can do some cool things in astral uh, that you might uh, want to spend things on. Like. So Go ahead. On the, the toilet ghost, all I did is the I took Astral and I get the free points for Astral. Yeah. And then I took Sneaky, because mainly I just use Astral just to spy on people. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's I didn't take any objects okay. in Astral. Did you look at the verbs under Astral? Like for Coax, for Let instance, you can, you can read people's emotions, actions. Um, oh. You can influence their emotions, actions, and their words with Coax in Astral. Detect okay. allows you to read auras. Yeah, because what do I got? I've got it all in detect, move, and prowl. Yeah, those are good ones. Yeah, there you go. I, like, I might drop one. Prowl, <clears throat> put it in. Code all set. spells work in astral. Uh, they just take different forms in astral. Like okay. it's like your fireball, you'd be summoning like a fiery lion or something. Most things take the form of animals because astral is all about spirit. Okay. So I can still access all my spells in astral. But sure they can, only but they affect, affect different things. Yeah. Yeah. They only affect the astral. Right. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. I need to take another, I'm going to buy another spell. For my uh, Steve Arino super cleaners, would we do the same thing? 10 cost and. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. How does healing work in this? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, mostly <clears throat> when you. Uh, so the whole point of the game is to put adjectives on your. Uh, your foe, okay? And so you yeah. kind of stage it out. One of the examples they gave is uh, my foe wants to knock your person unconscious, carry them to a truck, and run away with you, right? So there's at least three actions or three adjectives they've got to tag you with. They've got to knock you unconscious, they've got to pick you up and carry you, and they've got to get you into their car. So they've got to okay. at least put three tags on you to be able to, to do this, okay? Okay. A basic success uh means the adjective they put on you is fleeting it will just go away the next uh the next round or the next sequence so let's say they knocked you out but they didn't spend anything extra on it so it's just fleeting they've knocked you out the next round knocked out goes away so now you're conscious again okay okay so you can spend your push dice to make a success be sticky meaning it will last until some action is taken to get rid of the adjective okay or you can spend even more to make an adjective permanent i've just cut off your arm okay that's permanent that's, that's intense. Yeah. yeah so the way healing works is how long does it take to remove the adjective uh with a uh with a no extra like you didn't spend anything extra on it it goes away the next the next action or sometimes the next scene just depending on how you're working with things right yeah. if it's sticky uh you have to perform some action to get rid of it so let's say you're bleeding out and you make the you perform the action to basically first aid yourself and stop the bleeding that removes the adjective 
if I've cut off your arm, the only thing that's going to fix that is to put a cyber arm on <laughs> or have someone cast a spell that would grow you a new arm. Okay. Okay. All right. That sounds more complicated than what Ivan would be putting up with. So I think I'm going to just buy illusion for my last spell. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'll go with wide so I can hit a big area. Well, if you wanted to take a healing spell, for instance, if you wanted to have a healing spell, I would say a healing spell would allow to remove any physical adjective that is causing like pain, trauma, et cetera. Just remove it for your success. I might. So like you would be make you would be doing the action to remove the adjective from someone else. In other words. Okay. Which would work, and if you got the extra on it that it's mass, like you can do more than one target at a time, you okay. know that's that okay. that becomes very useful. I do that. Yeah, I would even say healing. If you wanted to make the effect permanent, you could regrow somebody's arm, which was also a permanent adjective. So I do healing. I throw mass on there for my one point. Mm -hmm. Uh, God, what other words could I throw on there to help my healing spell? Um, Okay, so like uh, in the example I just gave, you might put regeneration, which would allow you to give a, a good reason why you can regrow that arm that just got cut off. Okay, I'll do that. I'll think... That'll give me two points in healing. I think that's good enough. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, and, and again, you, you guys will have a couple of sessions to firm everything down if you think better of okay. you know, some of your adjectives, etc. Kind of just getting down, you know, the rough outline of your character. <laughs> uh, so let's let's talk about making effects last longer than just uh till the next action um that again is what your uh your push dice are so you can claim a push die by claiming an adjective you can also just hang on to push dice and don't spend them so that when you do (laughs) succeed you can say okay now i'm just going to spend uh, this push dies to make it sticky, meaning they've got to perform an action to get rid of my adjective, or yeah. I'm going to spend even more push dies to make this permanent, and they can't get rid rid of it unless someone else can do something permanent to them. Okay. So that's so I could like cast fireball, set a bunch of people on fire. I could say I want to spend a push dice so they to are keep staying on fire. on fire until they can okay. do something to put the fire out. Otherwise, the fire would go out the next round. Yeah. Okay. And that's actually, if you look at the character sheets, you see those two squares next to the adjectives? Yeah. I'm going to use Ivan's as an example. If you click the top square, that means it's sticky. That means that adjective is a sticky adjective, um, and you've got to perform something to get that adjective off of you. Okay. Okay. If the bottom one, or if they're both on, it means it's permanent. It's permanent. Yeah, and... The free adjective you get with each of your, um, the, the variation adjective I talked about, yeah. those are permanent. So being a dwarf okay. is permanent. <laughs> you know, so being a ghoul, check. Kaylee, is permanent. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right. So I'm back to spells. I'm not buying any gear. I'm just walking around naked. No, it just means that uh, that 50,000 New Yen suit that you're wearing, I can have of my own fireball go off, and now you don't have it anymore. Oh, if you don't okay. buy it with character points, it just means that it's something that I could destroy or take from you. Like, your characters okay. still have money that they can just buy stuff off the rack. You know, you don't have okay. to have it bought with character points. So previously, like, I had, uh, you know, a revolver. Yeah. You can still have By a revolver. Not... It's just not protected. Right. So you could say, you know, sniper shoots it yep. out of your hand, your revolver's destroyed. Like, yep. crap, I got to go steal one or buy a new yep. one. If you right. buy it with character points as an object, I can take it out of the scene or perhaps the story by shooting it out of your hand. But then you just take it to a smith who fixes it and you have it the next episode. So I can't permanently okay. remove something you buy with character points. Okay. 
I went ahead and I just uh, said that Kaylee's not using the pan that she was using the last time because the last <laughs> time she used it, uh, she hooked it directly into Scout's pan and it's infected. It, it's, it's so yeah. infected. Um, yeah. Yeah, it DDoSed a blimp with uh, like fifty. <laughs> Scan your system now. No, every infected. five minutes it just tells you <laughs> that you can download download more RAM every five minutes. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Or at least I have a, a an excellent attack strategy mm-hmm. for uh, when I need to just go full nuclear on something. <laughs> so, question on spell: If I cast invisibility, yep. I've got unattached, thinking I can cast it on us, and they can go off and do their thing. Oh, that's a nice invisible. one. That's a nice one. Yeah, uh, sneaky, so I can throw invisibility up on us. Mm-hmm without you know being seen that i'm throwing invisibility up mm-hmm. i've got group so i can get all of us yeah. i've got tech affecting that way security cameras oh, and stuff nice. don't yeah. see through it okay uh i've completely lost my question <laughs> <laughs> how long would it last that was my question uh how long I, do i main so again know? it depends uh so let's say you make your role right yeah and the base success means it just lasts until the next scene or the next action. But if you okay. save back one of your push die, you can make it sticky so that it's just there until someone does something about it. Okay. Okay. So like we're in yeah. combat, I cast invisibility on mm-hmm. us. I use one of my push die. Yeah. We should be invisible until yeah. someone counteracts right. it. Uh, right, cool. in, in cases of things that should be fleeting, that you make permanent, it just means that it's good until you decide it not to be good. So like through okay. the end of the adventure and you can say, okay, now it's dropped or, you know. Okay. But that's how timing works on this. Is Most things are just, it just happens in a flash unless you spin push dice to make it more permanent. Okay. For, for each out. slot you put towards a connection, you get two connections, right? Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so if I put two slots, I'd have four connections. All right, cool. All right, that means one, two, three. My spells are. Oh, your group uh, is also going to have shared connections that you. So the connections you're buying now, Jeff, are Gant, uh, Gantu's personal connections that are just your connections. Oh, yeah. The group yeah. has connections as a whole from everybody that you've met through your adventures, etc. Gotcha. Okay. I think okay. I'm done with this part. I think I've finished. I just have to transfer everything over from the document to my character sheet because <laughs> I was typing yeah. stuff just because it was easier to keep track of. Yeah. Absolutely. I did the first seven slots worth of stuff. Yeah. So. I got, got the uh, five additional ones. I got the CSS for this sheet. So what I'm going to end up doing is taking off the background for the verbs and be able to put in like four columns of verbs that you can put the headings above each one. So it'll all fit on one character sheet um, as well as changing the maximum number of push dice. Um, because right now it's only set for three as the maximum, but you guys will have uh, eight available to you. Right now, for my physical form, I've got untraceable from Prowl. Nice. And yeah. From my virtual form training, I've got technical from academic training, imaginative from artist, mm-hmm. observant from researcher, and secretive from spy. <laughs> nice. I, I kind of see Kaylee taking these virtual online courses to learn these things. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just like watching a lot of videos, like here's my experiences as a, you know, KGB agent or something like that. Right. Okay. I've got those seven spent. Mm-hmm. Do I need to do anything else? Did you put together a spell for, uh, actually, would it be a spell? Let me check something real quick. For Because you've summoned elements in the past. Did you take anything to do that now? I did not. Okay. Let me just look at something real quick. I kind of, I used it that one time and I killed everyone in a bowling alley. So, Oh, cool. You don't actually need anything special. Um, you can't, well, depending like 
<clears throat> you can enter a bargain with a spirit and then I just generate the verbs and adjectives for the spirit. It doesn't cost you anything at all. You just have to live up to the spirit of the deal. If you okay. wanted to browbeat a spirit into doing what you what you tell it to do, um, it's just using a verb that you have in your astral form. Okay. So you don't need anything special to to summon spirits. Okay. I'm not super worried about that. I didn't, like I said. You I, didn't use it too much, so. No, it was just the once. And then kind of with the later systems, <clears> I didn't <throat> have enough to reinvest in that. So right. I'm, I'm good with that being a skill I've, I haven't let kind of fall off. Let's see. Um... Yeah, nice. Under uh, spirits, they have the base cost is as bargained. <laughs> hmm. Nice. Okay. And uh, the healing role is treat. That is the verb treat. But that's what you would use normally to remove um, damage. So, like, if you're using your healing spell, <clears throat> you would use your treat verb, but then you would get to add your tags for having the healing spell. Okay. I don't have anything in treat. That's fine. I mean, you would still be able to say, but I have the healing spell. So that would yeah. give you something to work with. Okay. But if you wanted to be a really good healer, you might want some uh, points and treat. Again, yeah. you were never really big at the healing, so. No, uh, it's definitely was a emergency use only mm -hmm. kind of thing. So do you feel pretty confident about Ivan now? You think you got think down so. those things? Okay. I might need to, because I think the my sneak would fall under prowl. Mm -hmm. So I may need to readjust because for my points for Ivan, <clears throat> I was looking at the the dragon thing and for the magic form. What is that? Page 25. Uh, supernal form set all to zero, three points in anything. Yeah, I need to reevaluate that. Is yeah. remember the verb is the doing. The verb is actually uh how you do the thing the adjective just allows you to be better at doing the thing by adding yeah. some allowing you to use push dice but the verb itself is the important thing okay hmm. i might actually drop off just down to one purchased adjective on my meat space. I don't know. That's rough. Mm -hmm. Again, you'll have several, you know, you'll have at least two sessions to see how it works out and you can rejigger. Okay. <clears throat> So Ivan the Magic Man. Uh, Ivan in his tracksuit, is that your meat form? <laughs> yep. Okay. Yep. Which means that you do have at least a die and treat. So you should get it free. Yeah. <clears throat> so when I cast a spell, do I reference my supernal form for those stats? It depends on what you're trying to do. So again... So like Go ahead. Healing. Would so be... healing, um, if you're trying to heal somebody in meat space and you're in meat space, it would be your meat space healing or your meat space treat. Okay. Okay. If you were an astral and you're trying to heal something as in, in astral, then it would be your astral forms treat. Astral form. Yeah. 
So I would gain no benefit from putting points in my meat space treat. Or my, my magic, my supernal form treat. Um, well, again, depends. If you're trying to heal something magical, say a ghoul, that would be would more useful to, to you than it would in your meat space one. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. But if you're just trying to keep your buddies, you know, for the most part, patched up, it, it's good to have the treat in your meat space. Okay. All right. I need to pick out another adjective to support my... I've got a point detect, which is good. I need a boost up prowl to boost up my, give my invisibility some. Okay. So your invisibility, let's take that one for instance. Um, looking at supernal, <clears throat> uh, invisibility would probably be either detect or prowl your choice. I would probably go with prowl. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm just gonna dump three points into prowl. <clears throat> There's just not enough there. Okay. Because I need detect for my detect spell. I need fight for fireball and knockout. Mm -hmm. And I need prowl. Would my invisibility, invisibility spell prowl, would that reference my meat space prowl or mm. my supernal prowl? No, if you're casting the invisibility spell, you would use your supernal prowl okay. or, or detect, cool, 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 whichever cool. you're... Like, if you're trying to move around and not be uh, heard as well as not be seen, it would be prowl. But if you're just trying to avoid detection from, like, say, security cameras, it would likely be detect. Okay. I'm going to dump it into prowl. Okay, cool. So that's three. Let me double check my supernal form. You know what? I'm sorry, Chuck. Uh, just read detect for under supernal. Detect is your ability to see in things. So, like, you would be trying to beat the target's detect score. You, okay, you wouldn't be fine. rolling your own detect. You would be using prowl for yourself. Yeah. Right. Well, I still have a, the detect kind of spell, so I still need some points to detect anyway. But mm -hmm. so, yeah, for my invisibility spell, it would be going into prowl. Yeah. So I'm going to put point to detect, point to fight, point to prowl. This would get. Did you put uh, points into fight for your fireball or into target? I was putting it into fight for my, my spells are going to be ranged. Knockout and fireball will be ranged. Take the points out of fight and put them into target. I 100% can do that. Or is that shoot? It it's, should be the verb target. Um, so shoot, yes. It's shoot on this sheet. Okay. Okay. They're out of there and they're in shoot. So fight. Oh, so fight's just physical. Psychic duels and battle of wills. Okay. So cool. like if you were trying to like mind enslave somebody, you that fight might be the more useful verb. Okay. I'm not. I'm just lighting people on fire yeah. and rendering them unconscious through. Yeah. So shoot or target. That's that's the one you would use. Cool, 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 cool. All right. That's <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three. Okay. All right. Okay. Everybody else good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still uh, working out what to do with my remaining slots, and I think I'm just going to pack my virtual form with a whole crap load of tags. Yeah, or or get some contacts. Um, no oh, oh, yeah, have. I've already got yeah, some contacts. Okay. I need uh, three band members oh, and a uh, manager. May Absolutely. I suggest, if you've got slots, 
uh, another form. Did you read what Zeitgeist is? No. <laughs> that yeah, is social cool. media. That's your ability to sway mass sway crowds and the opinions of people as a whole. Oh, hell yes. There we go. <laughs> uh, that's page 20. Okay. Good. I got it. I'm happy with this. I can work with this. Realm of fame, reputation, social networking, propaganda, advertising, gossip, and innuendo. Perfect. <laughs> Gantu, how many machine guns do you have in your leg now? Uh, I just got the shotgun, but uh, man, I've got like, I, I don't know why I would ever get out of the van. I, I gotta be honest. <laughs> like, there's just no reason to. Uh, yeah, I've got I've got a van that's got guns and burst fire and a ret- and a riot hose. Oh shit! Oh yeah, you were talking about that. That'll be yeah. nice. And I have, I, and I, and I do have a hang glider. I do. Uh, it'll, I'll, yeah. we'll never use it uh, because no one ever wants me to have fun. Uh, hey, but I was in favor of hang gliding. I voted for that. It was very techno-G. quiet too. No one will ever hear it coming. Can um, it carry an extra passenger? It didn't have that option. <laughs> well, you could have made it up. saddle for your <laughs> yeah. edge on saddle. it. Uh, so, Jake, with Zeitgeist, you don't need another sheet because you can't spend any points other than just the one slot on it. There's there's nothing more to buy with Zeitgeist. Once you buy the form in it, it just allows you access to the social media places, and then it's just based off your meat space uh, ability to persuade and to do stuff. <laughs> Well, I'll just, uh, instead of having that be persuaded by my meat space stuff, it'll be persuaded by my uh, alias, oh, which yeah, I will purchase yeah, for exactly. myself. Yeah. All right, so it sounds like people are pretty much got their characters. Yeah. All right. Cool. I think we're going to have to do a lot of work on uh, connections. Absolutely. A finalizing yeah, thing. That's it. I'm not going with connections. I'm just riding on Gantu's coattails. I have two connections so far. I have Estelle, who's the hotel manager uh, where, I, where, I, where I stay. We have, we have very respectful connections. I was thinking about doing, I was thinking about doing obsessive, uh, but I didn't. And then I got Big Frank because we have a person. I have a personal assistant now, uh, but he, he's oh, very shit. Yeah. nice. I got a lot of stuff going on, uh, and I got two more. I got to fill out. I'm still kind of figuring. Out. But uh, I have a lot of objects. I have cyber arm, cyber leg, reflex, sim- and like they're decked out, like as can be. Reflex simulators, the hauler, a hang glider, uh, a couple different guns. I got a a pretty fancy uh, personal pad uh oh. everything's firewall uh with and then i put like the rock and bowl is a building it's bowling alley it's got apartments it's firewalled it's astrally secure uh it's classy nice. and there's a microbrewery in it oh. uh oh and steve <laughs> steve arena is super cleaners uh it's business cleaning service it's respected uh it's profitable uh, it's insured. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've learned, damn it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I think uh, I might. I think I might add. I'm, I think I might take classy out of rock and bowl and put it insured there as well. That's ins- yep. That's what I'm gonna yep. go ahead and do. Okay. Doesn't need to be classy. Uh, and I also have employees at the. Super, yeah. So. Yeah. You should have one of your contacts be the dude, just a regular at the bowling alley mm-hmm. who's got all of the skeezy streets you know knowledge yeah i think okay yeah i think that's what i'm gonna do <laughs> and put some 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 dude bowling regular oh man Oh, you mean oh, what, was John, what was John, John Goodman's character? Why am I blanking on John Goodman's character's oh, name? Uh, Walter, right? Yes. Walter. Okay. Well, it's gonna, that's that's his gonna be his name. Walter, Walter. Sobach. He'll be Knowledgeable way too forward. young to have ever been anywhere near the Vietnam War, and yet won't stop talking about it. 
<laughs> knowledgeable yeah. bowler and i'm gonna say oh gosh i already used loyal um i've used respectful and loyal so far what is my risk what's my relationship adjective uh obsessive is he obsessed with me you have rolled a lot of 300 games yeah i'm gonna put obsessive Little did he know that I was just invisible back there in the thing, just swatting your pens <laughs> down for you. <laughs> I need a, I need a, what's a, what would be a good fourth connection? Uh, do you got something for security? You were always good friends with security dudes. So I got Big Frank as my personal assistant, but yeah, that's a good idea. I should put, I should put, yeah. What, uh, what, um, law enforcement stuff or or person or, or private security is uh is well known in in detroit like what's what's uh what's the top of the line there bert i'm sorry say that I, I was reading something uh what private security companies operate in detroit oh well it's uh it's uh, aries so it's um uh the wolf night around there's night around oh, is no. aries okay nights around yeah. okay okay gotcha Yeah, I think it's gonna be. Uh, it sounds like it sounds like a. No, I can't use Garfunkel because that's been one of my. Yeah. One of my aliases. I can't do that. Hmm. Uh, Simon. No, I was. Simon. Yeah, he was Simon. Oh, yeah. yeah, we were doing yeah. the whole thing. Well, like, it lots of, the hang glider thing came up when we were in Germany. Yeah. That's where I was Simon. He was Garfunkel. Oh my god. Um. I'm gonna call her. I'm gonna say Bertha Knights Errant. Okay. Security person. And I think that one's the relationship. I think that one might be affectionate, not lustful. Because that's not. Affection. That's not Gantu style. It's affectionate. It's like flirting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, I've got a hotel manager personal assistant a knowledgeable bowler you know street smart guy and then uh and then uh, and then bertha my knight's errant security lady contact all right i think i'm all set and i'm scrappy tough gregarious savvy and fistic uh from my uh from all of my what's it called my uh employee you know you put your stats in whatever those things were called yeah careers or something all right so you guys got it good enough that we can do the setup here uh get a little bit of this so. in before we uh we call a night on this yeah so yeah. you guys again you've been having uh pretty good lives maybe a little uh maybe a little lean on fun <laughs> in the bang bang shooty sort of way but having stable incomes not having to worry about uh hiding underground uh building names for yourselves in your chosen fields uh, the only dis disquieting thing that's been going on is, is there's been all kinds of news reports coming out about another uh, VTAS outbreak going on in the greater Chicago area. So VTAS uh, was the, the virus that caused the change for people that goblinize, turn into oryx, elves, etc. Um, there were two outbreaks of VTAS. And uh, so there's some official news stories going on that Chicago is having another outbreak. And you're seeing scenes on the tridio displays of um ucas which is what you're a part of your this area is uh under ucas control united i forget what it is uh united Camer canadian american states something like that it's uh yeah you know it's its own that zone right yeah the ucas government um they're showing pictures of them demolishing buildings in downtown chicago uh <laughs> you know putting up barriers and these the news reports are saying that it's a vtas outbreak this has been going on for a few days in the news um people are a little you know unquiet about it uh chicago is awfully close <laughs> uh to your home in detroit here um and there have been refugees coming in um talking about uh with just stories about not it not being a, a viral breakout of VTAS at all, that there's something going on in downtown Chicago, the heart of Chicago. They're saying that bug spirits uh, are inhabiting people. There's an outbreak, and uh, the government's trying to contain it all. 
uh, and so this is hitting like the uh, the dark web uh, certain information sources you guys still keep tapped into uh, at large this isn't hitting the public at all uh, the public's all about it being another VTAS outbreak and then um, in August 23rd uh, 2055 there is new stories that just cut in across all the feeds across UCAS and they're showing that uh, Chicago has been declared, the entirety of Chicago has been declared a containment zone. Uh, they've shown it's being walled off. Uh, anyone in there is not being allowed to leave. They're not allowing anyone in. And it starts a mass panic saying that it, it's going to spread. Milwaukee, Lansing, eventually get up this way towards Detroit, uh, which is just throwing everybody into just a blind panic. People are packing up they want to get out of the area before they're cordoned down uh this news story still say it's a virus another vtaz outbreak so you guys are sitting at the bowling alley where say uh let's say this is a friday night uh over new barrel of uh beer that you got in at a pretty good price did a favor it's ipa a night <laughs> yeah there yeah. you go oh no i'm not the fan of ipas it's, it's ipa happy. friday <laughs> I mean, I like the percentage, but I prefer something dark, a little creamy, I mean, you something like you can price. chew. I like the price. Too. price. IPA we'll talk about always in the, uh, the yeah, high right. percentage of man buns in the crowd. Uh, <laughs> so many man buns. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, so it, that just brings a quiet to like the whole bar. And, you know, some people start just paying up their tabs. Uh, people start clearing out. So, like, what's your reaction to this? You all have to probably you've got your own booth, gone to, uh, again to. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> sure. No one's cheeks touch these seats unless uh, I say so. Mm -hmm. uh, y'all, uh, y'all don't think it's got anything to do with that old uh, that old stuff down in the Caribbean. Where like people were taking each other over and such. Nah, you ain't got nothing to do with that, right? I hope, I hope not. I mean, like I had the flea spirit like controlling me, and it was very unpleasant. I hope it's not more. I mean, like if it's just Vitas, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I mean, so what? People are yeah. turning into bug people. It's you know. Then they said like bug spirits and a flea is like a flea spirit and a flea is a bug. So like you know. I don't get in that old magic mumbo jumbo yeah. stuff, but like, it you know, could be connected. I would hope not. Like, especially, well, I mean, I guess they were targeting the Aries people, and this is Aries territory. Is Chicago Aries territory as well? Yes. Um, yeah, certainly okay. is. Uh, Detroit is their, like, their home turf. Uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, Night Rand is pretty heavy in Chicago as well. But all the news reports are showing UCAS strike force, not not Aries specifically. It's all uh, UCAS government. It's all government. Yeah. Kaylee, you getting anything? Uh, any scuttlebutt on the the interweb thingy? You know, whatever it is. You know, I got people who do that for me now. But like, I'm just curious. Do we have a like a hollow projector in our private booth here? That uh, oh, Tridio. Well, Everybody has Tridio. Yeah. Well, just to put Kaylee's avatar sitting there with us when we... Yeah, I was uh, going to say I've got a buzzer drone worth uh, 4K here that I could just sort of have hovering around that I can talk through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, I Kaylee. Mean, you, uh, you're hanging out in the boiler room. In the, like, we got a special yeah. room for you. Yeah, I'm here, in the I boiler think, so. room of the cleaning yeah. area of uh, yeah. Yeah. Steve Arenos right now. So <laughs> Perfect. Well, let's do Anybody the Anybody first... who doesn't pay their tab, we just send <laughs> down there to you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do the first roll of the game then. Uh, you're trying to find out more uh, to try to pierce the cover story that the news is putting on. So this is probably going to be uh, in the virtual world for you, although not necessarily. Uh, how do you want to go about finding out? Um, yeah, I'll just, uh, do a, I'll just do a quick internet search, really. Okay. Internet search. Uh, yeah, are you diving in? Uh, are you going yeah. to, okay so it's going to be detect is going to be the base uh, that's locate information find or examine other virtual forms track data streams yeah. all right so do you have uh, an adjective or any software that would help observant observant okay um, so at the top of your sheet there um, where it says push and then charged and discharged Make sure that, uh, again, you guys get more than three, but for just right now, make sure that all three dice, so if you click on the red circle, make sure all three are in the charged area. Nope. I clicked on it, and it's now down to two. 
<laughs> Keep clicking. It'll go back to three. <laughs> okay, good. Good, good, good. All right. So if you will, uh, if you will click the detect button, and then we'll ask you how many push dice. So like you've got one adjective you can use. So that would be one push die that you can claim. Eh, I'm just doing a basic net search, so I won't push anything. Sure. And just uh, click on the. There we go. So six. Um, you get a six. Oh. There you go. And you don't have any hurt dice. You don't have any negative adjectives. So that's a success. Um, I was going to make this fairly high. I was going to say a four because they're really locking down this information. Um, mm -hmm. The first thing you find out is that the videos that they've been running on the screen for the last couple of days, uh, they're all time shifted. No one has heard a peep out of Chicago in the last five days. All of the stuff you've been seeing on the TV happened days ago. Chicago has been completely huh. silent from the net, from even magical surveillance for the last five days. Oh, boy. Well, uh, here's the scoop, uh, the scoop Arino from Steve Arino's. Uh, there's no news of any sort for the past five days coming out of Chicago, um, which means either everyone died and someone failed to report it or or it's just been taken away uh do we have a, a bunker somewhere like where we can hide from bombs that would be nice. yeah i got the holler don't worry we're, we're good. okay good well yeah. Yeah, i mean the it's the government right it's got to be the government they're they're just locking down hundred percent. Have you noticed any weird right. clouds? Like maybe well, they nuked it. Uh, hang on, hang on. Hey, Walter, Walter, come here for a sec. Come here for a sec. Come on over here. So, so Walter, Walter, Walter is is a is a sort of a knowledgeable conspiracy theorist, Boulder oh, yeah. Boulder guy. <laughs> All right. Very very obsessive about like kind of getting yeah, okay. getting into the conspiracies and stuff. He's, he's literally John Walter Goodman. from. He needs yeah, to he's be got, he's John everything. Goodman. So yeah. it's stylish, but he has an actual tinfoil hat on his head. Mm. Yeah, you looking good, Walter? That boy, Wally. I like it. I like it. Yeah, it keeps Very the mind stylish. control lasers out. Hey, man. that's You don't want them mind control. I mean, t Ivan and I know a thing or two about mind control. So I'll tell you, we we definitely know that you, uh, you know, if you can make us a couple, we wouldn't mind them, to be honest. I got a guy that makes them. What do you need, Gantu? I mean, uh, your IPA night's a slow night. And he looks around, but it's never been this dead before. Well, I mean, that's fair, but uh, you heard the news, right? There's some stuff going down in Chicago. People kind of getting all worried. It's going to be blowing northward. Yeah, the whole VTAS thing. You know, you know, I, I, yeah. I, you know, this is why I don't drink your beer here. You know, I, I pay your bartenders and all, but, you know, I only drink my own urine. It's the only way to know for sure that they're not putting anything in it. Right, but then, like, how do you get urine, though, other than by drinking liquids? He pauses, he thinks about it for a minute. I'm not exactly sure. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, that's something to ponder later. Uh, but for now, uh, just kind of curious. I mean, like, we got it on good authority, maybe, that uh, some of the info we've been seeing on the old web and such is uh, time shifted. You heard anything? Anything going on? Oh, well, they do that all here? the time. That that, that goes right, on all the time. I mean, you know, they staged the whole moon landing thing, right? That was like moon, eight years moon, ago. What? what the fuck, man? No, you, yeah, no, the the recent one. Oh, my bad. I <laughs> sometimes the news in Russia was slow as a child. My bad. Yo, yeah, they went I up got there someone to, to filter, filter my three. news, and that's just not part of it anymore. Well, yeah, so, I mean, the government, so, they do that all the time. I mean, yeah, it's its all a show, right? I mean, maybe they're just using all of Chicago as some, some kind of experimental thing. Maybe. You hear anything going on around here, though? Like anything kind of blowing up here in the... Well, I, I know the you, highways... You got your, are... your ear to the, to the sidewalk or whatever the phrase is? Oh, of course. I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, the only thing going on right now is, like, the highways are packed. Everybody's, like, fleeing, leaving the area, heading out to Pittsburgh yeah. and, and further. Pittsburgh. Who the hell wants to go to Pittsburgh? That, I know, right? Hmm. Why I mean, they still put the that? fluoride in the water there. I mean, it's horrible. Yeah. It calcifies your brain that. cells, man. It makes you, makes and, you docile. And then the, te the what it does to your urine taste is unspeakable. Oh, I know. Honest. I mean, it's it's bad. I mean, I, 
It's you worse know. than this double IPA. My, well, my filtration is. systems can do wonders with the urine, but it just can't get the fluoride out. It's horrible. Yeah. But, yep. yeah, I mean, I, uh, I don't know. Uh, this one is in – I. Th- there's not really any conspiracy going on other than – I mean, this is news to me. Uh, everything's time-shifted, mm-hmm. you say? Yeah. yeah. <sighs> I don't know. I mean – so no one heard. No one's heard nothing for like five days. It's been like five days since we've gotten any kind of actual update from Chicago. Well, you know, Boy. I've got I've got an aunt, Aunt Petunia's in Chicago, and he he's trying to make up. Well, she shouldn't be safe then if she's an aunt yeah. because apparently it's stuff with bugs. Yeah, so he's trying to make a call. It's like it's, it's not going through. Hey, uh, hey, Kaylee, can you try to put a you know, do work your magic. Can you can you get old Walter's Aunt Petunia on the line, maybe? Oh, yeah, sure. Just took it up to my uh, my dibbly do here. Oh wait, do I even have one on this? No, I don't. Um, no. <laughs> oh. Well, that's that's a no. <laughs> Sorry Actually, about uh, that. Kaylee, just doing just uh just uh don't even have to roll for it. Just doing a quick search through it, like. There, it's as if Chicago doesn't exist. There is no data stream in any way, shape, or form coming in or going to, or go, coming in or coming out of Chicago. Even the satellites show that it's just not there. It's just, it's just, there's nothing there. Astral's instantaneous, like, tr- I'd move it like the speed of light, right? Mm-hmm. Ah, give me a second. What's the address? I take a quick nap. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to Walter, I'm asking Walter yeah, for yeah. an address. He's like, yeah, he sends it over on the on the pan. All right, I'll be back, and then I go astral. I'm just gonna fly over to Chicago real quick, and hopefully <laughs> not get possessed by another. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, just finish. You... Roll your character up, and yeah. now you gotta roll a whole nother. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I'll just be a bug person. You don't get all that far really uh so you zip over your yeah, astro travels almost in- instantaneous uh yeah. it is surrounded by you cast magical troopers that are they uh they weren't kidding when they said chicago containment zone the whole place is ringed it's like there's a, a dome over chicago that you can't see through which means it's partially organic whatever the dome is and exists in both astral and physical space um, um these astral mages that are on guard on it mm-hmm. we, as they see me approaching are they yeah they, they kind hostile? of form up and they yeah they just tell you just go away <laughs> nothing to see here okay i don't want to get astrally shot and that's not pleasant so um i was just trying to visit my aunt but if it's this closed off i will not hassle you any longer apologies and i wish you the best of luck in your work days if you're ever in Detroit, stop by the bowling alley and I'll buy you beer. Uh, as you're saying this, uh, you just kind of catch some motion at the, you know, just in your peripheral vision. Uh, something from inside that dome is pecking itself out, almost like a chicken breaking through an eggshell. And you see like these enormous, like mantis like arms starting to kind of crack its way through the shell. And as this is happening, these, uh, these combat mages all kind of zone in on the, the part and they start crafting more layers of whatever this dome is to kind of seal it up, seal it up, seal it up. And so all you caught were like these praying mantis like legs coming out, uh, okay. before they go and seal things up. I'm returning to my body to report I'm like, yeah, it's, um, they've got that entirely magically sealed. And there's a lot of security mages for UCAS um and when i approached they're like fuck off kindly sir and i'm like okay but then i looked inside and there was like a giant like praying mantis pincers trying to break out of their magical dome and they they left to go reinforce it so like fuck chicago maybe the caribbean was safer can can insects they don't they don't swim right but they fly shit Walter, your your aunt is dead. She is now insect. I'm hey, sorry. Hey, hey, you know, no, that's no. Don't listen to him. Not Aunt Petunia. That, Aunt that, Petunia would have went down fighting. 
Yeah, I haven't done know what he's talking about. That IPA is like 24 alcohol by volume. It it's is. I am so cool. drunk right now. <laughs> 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 I am so drunk when I went astral, you know, like seeing doubles. I was projecting doubles. It was, yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah, Walter is, he wanders away then. You kind of put a bug in his ear that his Aunt Petunia might be dead. And he's like, ah, she can't, you yeah, know, she's an old, she's a tough old bird. She's fine. She's fine. Uh, just walks I away muttering to there. himself. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah so this is fucked, guys. This has completely killed the mood in your bowling alley tonight. There's a few stragglers that are just too drunk to leave yet. It's probably why they haven't. <laughs> but uh, it's pretty much just dead. IPA night, not good. <laughs> we should definitely do like Kaylee said and get like a bunker and like... I start doing like I'm not really good at like protection magic, but I can try. I mean, we can. I mean, I've definitely decked out the old, uh, you know, the old van a bit. So uh, I mean, oh, we can man. use that for now. Uh, anyone gets close to us, uh, we just hose them down. Uh, and like bugs don't like water or whatever it is. Is that? But. Uh, I mean, this place is pretty secure, though, you know? You can't hack your way in here. We got Astral Secure. You guys are here, you know? So, yeah. we have a decent place. We can lock this Well, I mean, down. I'm not exactly here. But you're in the boiler room. You're in the you're boiler still room. Here. Well, what are you okay. talking about? Uh, no, like, right. I could throw a beer bottle and hit your front door. Well, I can't. I'd have so, to go into the back area. But If you it's, did, it's, I would hit you with my hoverboard anyway. So, it's, Kayla, you, know, you probably McFly. have all the security systems in this place, you know, noted into your computer so you know what's going on. It's uh, plugged directly into my head right now. Okay, like, so <laughs> a bunch of unmarked black sedans and vans are just pulling up in mass in front of the bowling alley. Do we have any turrets uh, on the bowling alley by any chance? Uh, no, but uh, I got the old uh, the old hussy parked uh, parked in the garage. I could go hop in there and ask got some guns. All right, I'll uh, meet you there. Yep. Then uh, then you'll just see the drone floating around. Go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some smartly dressed folks in uh, black, uh, well well cut trench coats start walking in uh they're definitely the you know g-man type with glasses cyber audio in and they start going to the rest of your customers and politely basically they're scanning their cred ships paying off their bills and just kind of ushering them out but politely they're like oh yeah we'll get you a cab don't you worry about it no 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 it's nice ipas are on us i Really, IPAs? Why are they paying? We should have charged more. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. You know, it's just uh, very low key, but they're just spreading out around the bowling alley and just basically just getting all of the rest of your customers to leave. But they're paying up all their bills. And do, do we want to be seen by them? Well, I mean, I am a premier businessman within the city of Detroit, so uh, uh, I do believe, as the owner of this establishment, I have a right to know what the hell they're doing. So I will speak to one of them and be like, excuse me, kind sir and or madam, uh, what the hell are you doing? Uh, big smile uh, on her face as you're saying this. And uh, she like, gazed like she's talking or listening to somebody over her cyber gear. Uh, just one moment, sir. Your, your questions will be answered. I'm, I'm sorry for the inclusion. Uh, intrusion. I, we're making sure everybody's paid up, though. Uh, we'll put in a hefty... Uh, percentage for all of your your wait wait staff as well yeah and you're coming kind through of the door and like everyone in here though i think an explanation might be in order uh as you say that coming in through the door uh you haven't seen him in quite some time he's a murloc mr murloc comes in uh, but he's not in his fancy suits he's not got his well-shod cane that he walks around with no he's in tactical gear He's in oh, full-on tactical gear. Uh, he's got a backpack on that kind of hides his hump. He's got the full sensor suite on his head, talking to a couple of people on trench coats next to him. He's nodding back and forth. One of them hands him just a heavy black aluminum case. And he walks up oh. to your table. Ah, it's IPA night. You made it just in time. <laughs> uh, as he brings the case to the table, uh, you guys have seen this case before. 
Oh, it's uh, the ears. No, this case. It's the AI. It's the, it's the AI. AI. It's the case yeah. for the oh, AI. Shit. Uh, Mr. Murloc brings it over, and uh, he just kind of looks up in the air and says, Kaylee, are you online? Oh, no, she's going to van. <laughs> she was going to shoot y'all. It's all right. We can we can tell her it's, it's okay. Hey, stand down there, Kaylee. We got uh we got friendly. Yeah, hop back in, Kaylee. You need to talk. It's old friend Morlock. I got someone that you should probably meet. And he just like lays the case on the table and looks at all of you guys and looks at the IPA. And says, and kind of waves over to one of your wait staff. He says, bring a couple of pictures of that to the table. We got. We got a long discussion to have, and just sits down, lights up a cigar, and that's where we'll end it for the night. Nice. <laughs> nice. Oh boy, back. Nice. back. Mr. Like Moorcock it. is back. <laughs> Mr. Moorcock. I wrote that down so many times because I forgot. <laughs> you look at my old notes, man. I'm telling you. Is that a C or an L? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Murloc. Uh, I think World of Warcraft. He makes the blah, 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 sound. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. Uh, so there we go. Uh, folks uh, that know Shadowrun lore, we're about to hit Bug City. Uh, yeah. That's our next story arc. So, Jeff, what you got going on with the Log Gaggers uh, coming up this week? Uh, tomorrow night, uh, twitch.tv slash the Gaggers. We are playing Ultraviolet Grasslands. You can catch both uh, Bert and Chuck in that game. Uh, Friday, uh, we're going to be playing another one shot of Holler, uh, which we are nice. going to be doing. Uh, kind of a longer campaign of soon after UVG, so that's so they're going to get to play it too. Uh, but yeah, we're going to do another one shot on Friday. Uh, Saturday, we're doing uh, One Ring Second Edition, where Steven, who is also in a, in this game here, he'll he'll be in that game now too. Nice. And then next Monday, we got Deadlands, so you can check that out. Uh, well, uh, Jake and Chuck, you got anything for the Cobalts coming up? Uh, what do we got? We got Wednesday, 9 p.m. on Defenders of Cobalt. We're going to play, be playing some Forbidden Lands, but we're doing it in the D&D Basic Thunder Rift setting. Uh, I think everyone here will be there. Jake, you're in that, right? You play our guy who stabs people in the hearts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I stabbed like six bugs in the heart. It was great. Uh, and then let's see here. Oh. Thursday, we'll be back with Watercolors and Warriors, but Ashley is watching this. We're doing a and d campaign, but I can't say what because it's a surprise to the players. <laughs> since Ashley's in the chat, I can't say what it is. Uh, and then Friday at 10 p.m. on Defenders, we'll be back with uh, our Shadow Run game uh, where everything's just going to hell in a handbasket. Uh, they killed some cops. They stole a cop car. They're wanted by... Well, they they they're okay with the triad they're beefing with the halloweeners it's bad uh but that's okay tuesday uh that's a tuesday it's a tuesday <laughs> saturday at 1 p.m we're going to be over on grim and perilous plays doing some strixhaven uh jeff and jake are both in that uh and then i'll let you talk about saturday night for goodman games yeah, uh, so if you found the stream, we're at twitch.tv slash Steam Steal or Murder. Uh, Tuesday night is BX Dungeons and... No, wait, no. Tuesday is first edition Dungeons and Dragons. We're playing through the Desert of Desolation series. Friday is BX Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Saturday on official Goodman Games, we're running some weird frontier. Some little horror, Wild West. Um, yeah, yeah. So we're doing that. Right. And uh, next Sunday, we're going to have uh, some Boot Hill nice so yeah we got a lot going on this week as well uh well i know this was uh kind of just uh, a lot of math and character creation system out there but i appreciate those who stuck around to listen to us chat and get the new system underway uh so thanks so much we will come back to this in uh, two weeks and we will kick off some bug city uh good night everybody good night good night everybody